I am sitting in one of the last remaining structures at the tip of the Albany Bulb. The Albany Bulb was an artist squat that was destroyed in June of 2014. This place is making me think a lot about home. Now it's six months later. I've been thinking about home for quite a while. This video took so long in part because it's really difficult to talk about the Bulb as a visitor. I had the kind of absurd privilege of being able to visit the Bulb with a car and a digital camera. Those facts make my experience of the Bulb fundamentally different from the experiences of those people who made the Bulb their home and who were subsequently evicted. I think that it's absolutely essential to let the Bulb and its residents speak for themselves. So here, I've made a video which is completely their words. An open letter from a Bulb resident. But here I am, in this little screen, talking to you. The Bulb had a really powerful impact on me. It reminded me of evictions in my own life, and I want to try to convey that impact to you. The big problem in making a video about the Bulb, from my filmmaker's perspective, is that the first time I visited the land, the eviction had already happened. The place was haunted with evicted specters, withered tents, abandoned sleeping bags, concrete caves filled with books. It felt like I was walking through a graveyard, but not quite a graveyard, more like an ancient ruin like Troy or Babylon. It was difficult to tell what debris came from the eviction and what was simply there because the bulb was a dump. I wasn't just walking through the shattered dwellings of a few hobos on the outskirts of society. I was walking through the remains of my entire civilization. The whole place felt holy, numinous, like it was on the edge of this world and another that only a few could see. The people who lived there lived on the edges. They had been rejected from society and had found value in the things that that society had defined as waste. Demolished buildings were dumped into the sea so that they would be out of sight. But from the edge, the Bulb residents could see what was there. They made their home out of it. And yet to the city of Albany, it was invisible. They were invisible. Things which are not easily seen are often the most important. The place was steeped in a religious worldview. I think there is something about living directly with stones and dirt which makes a religious outlook inevitable. Bible quotes and images of Christ littered the landscape. But these weren't stale icons meant to cover institutional walls. These were living images which served a vital creative purpose to the people who had made them. Build your house on firm foundation where neither moth nor worm will eat it up. Fight the good fight and the gates of hell will not prevail. Faith. The land was made out of trash, yet it was undeniably alive. Faces peered out of every corner of the rubble, watching, listening. Their message was paradoxical, one of permanent impermanence. It was clear that the residents expected to be evicted eventually. It was eerie to view their warnings after the eviction had already taken place. What happens to a dream deferred? These messages in stone ensured that when the builders departed, something of them remained. For instance, this tree. Boxing Bob. Peace, love, and boxing gloves. Everything I know about Boxer Bob comes from artifacts. Here's a fantastic video about the mansion that he built. It's like a mansion, you know. And here is something more painful. In a dumpster brought by the city, I found this. I sat here and waited forever for you or anybody to come back. This was totally fucked up. You don't leave friends behind like you just did. You better find me because I ain't looking for you. Thanks for wasting my time, Frank. The bulb provides a window into the lives of a group of people who were repeatedly ripped from their homes. It shows that home need not be a box equipped to keep out the elements. Rather, home is a container of a more symbolic kind. This was someone's home. These people poured their identities into this concrete and trash and they made it into something beautiful. Their ownership of the place didn't come from legal contract. Rather, it came from the fact that they had sculpted the land into their own image. Home is a special kind of structure which we can transform into ourselves. Our homes are the vessels in which we house our identities. The bulb shows that identity can persist long after physical bodies depart. The life and work of words and images can be felt across space and time. 
take these last two lines of Shakespeare's 73rd sonnet, published in 1609. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well, which thou must leave ere long. An open letter from a bulb resident to visitors. It's just like, you just, all you need is a little food, that's it. You know, you, you, everything should be all right. Then you, you kind of like go through a transition thing, you know what I'm saying, with something that you like to do, you're, you're doing it all the time. You know what I'm saying, as long as you got food in your mouth, you can continue to do it, you know what I mean? It's a wonderful the question thing. might be, is this really the best use for the land? Or can this situation with the homeless continue to be tolerated? 